Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a special day again today for us in a circle group. We've got uh, Ilan from Order Chartist who's got up at an unearthly hour to come and um, share some insights and uh, some, uh, not only in terms of markets and stuff, he's a fantastic educator and very entertaining, but also in terms of how Order Chartist can work. And, and help you in your decision making. And one of the most important things that we're all short of is, of course, time. So how to use the time leverage that it offers to to add to your trading it is available to all Go Markets clients. Um, so I'll run a little poll. If you haven't got it, or you you want some support doing it. Um, I'll flick the support guys um, a uh, sort of the response from that poll, so anybody who needs help can get it. But it is available in your client portal. So um, watch and learn from. Uh, one of the guys I've the utmost respect for, and I'll pass you over to Elan. But first of all, obviously, we've got to say this, that, that of course, this is for educational purposes only. You've got to make the choices, not only in trading, but also, of course, whether you add things like auto charters to your trading toolbox. Um, and of course, risk management is a key thing of everything that not only we do at Go Markets, but I know it's a big thing for Elan as well. So he's going to... Um, reference that to show you the risk calculator that's available as well so without any further ado i will put you in the capable hands of the man himself um just give us a second there we go it should be uh there ready and and you should be able to see me is that right we can see you yes we can see you okay fantastic um, i'll leave them in your, i'll leave them in your hands alan i think they're Wonderful. That's so, so everybody, I've got three monitors. I've got a monitor where I look at you. I've got a monitor with my MetaTrade, and I've got a monitor with my with all my questions and 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 stuff and chat and questions. So, I'm going to try keep track of all three monitors. Um, I hope I can. Uh, if I don't, if I look away from you, I'm I'm not uh, talking to my wife. I'm looking for a Meta. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. It's been it's been a while since we've spoken last. Uh, I'm super excited to give this presentation. I've just finished my first cup of joe, um, uh, so my, I can feel my brain uh, kicking in. And um, I always like uh, doing this early in the morning because that means I haven't cherry picked. Uh, I haven't cherry picked my um, <laughs> my examples, right? Uh, which is always a dangerous thing in um, in in live uh, trading sessions. So uh, here we go. So um, if everyone can see my order chartist uh, expert advisor that I dragged and dropped onto my onto my chart, um, uh, you'll see this uh, a little scanner on the bottom left of your of the chart where you dropped it onto. Uh, if you uh, don't have this expert advisor in your um, in your expert advisor section, in the navigator section in, in, in Meta, uh, then what you need to do is you need to go to uh, uh, gomarkets.com, uh, go into the client portal. And once you're on the client portal, there is a download link um, uh, to download the AutoCharters MetaTrader plugin. There's a download link uh, to, to do that. And it's one of those uh, very simple wizards. You just click next, 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 and the thing installs itself. Um, uh, it should be pretty straightforward, you know. Um, and at, at the end of that uh, kind of uh, five-minute process, you uh, you have this expert advisor called AutoCharlist, and you also have the AutoCharlist risk calculator. Now, um, I'm going to try uh, get through both uh, very, on a very, very high superficial level, but I know that we're going to be doing quite a few of these sessions. And so what we'll do is we'll do a very high level today and dig in uh, deeper and deeper as, as we go. Uh, today's focus is obviously on, on trying to find trading setups with all the chartists. And, and so I get back to the section of, the, of this EA, and um, despite the fact that it's called an EA, it does not trade on your behalf, right? So, so don't worry about dragging and dropping it onto your chart. It does not trade on your behalf. Um, uh, it is simply uh, an EA because we use some functionality that is only available to expert advisors in MetaTrader rather than indicators. Um, and, and, that, and that functionality is these very fancy uh, user interface uh, components. Um, so what is AutoChartist? So AutoChartist really at, at its core is two components. It's um, a market scanner and a risk management tool. Um, and today's focus on the market scanner. And what it is, is 
a, a methodology to really narrow down what's going on in the markets for you. Uh, so um, when I'm waking up in the morning uh, now, it's uh, 5 a.m. for me. I woke up 30 minutes ago, 4.30. Uh, I'm dazed and confused. I want to know what's going on in the market. Um, Auto Charters will give me a very quick technical outlook of what's been going on. So um, I can see, uh, for example, uh, if I click on this little view button um, over here, GBP Swiss Franc H1, um, I'm expecting a big movement on pound Swissy, right? And when I click on it, I can actually see that Auto Charters has given me um, uh, Sorry guys, I see that my audio is down. Mike, can you hear me? People are saying my audio is down. Um, can I get a test? Can anyone hear me? Audio is fine. Oh, okay. I saw some people. Uh, I see uh -huh. Stephen, Ranjiv. People are I saying audio is down. Oh, okay. All right. Good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, I've got a bit of a, a scare. <laughs> people are telling me my audio is down, and I thought I was talking to myself for the last five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, so as we can see, uh, back to that, so we click on this little view button uh, next to uh, pound Swiss franc, and uh, we expect a big movement. And and as we can see here, that really there was a very large movement on pound Swiss franc. This uh, large movement, actually big movements um, uh, alert, uh, tells us that it was an exceptionally large movement. Um, in fact, from a statistical perspective, it means that the movement was in the 98th or greater percentile. Right? That means it only happens uh, once or twice in every uh, hundred or so uh, um, uh, candles. Okay. Um, same thing with uh, Swiss franc uh, Japanese yen. Right? Again, a v exceptionally uh, large movement on Swiss franc Japanese yen. Interestingly enough, we can see that both of these are against uh, the, the Swiss franc. Right? So the Swiss franc, for some reason, uh, in the last few hours, uh, missed my trading session, obviously, it's during your trading session. The last few hours, it uh, dramat dropped dramatically against two seemingly unrelated uh, currency pairs, the pound and the Japanese yen. Right? So definitely something going on with Swiss, Swiss franc um, uh, created a bit of volatility um, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Switzerland. I haven't seen the news. I might have to go uh, look at the news to see what actually happened. Right? Um, I also uh, see uh, that the uh, Euro Kiwi also, absolutely uh, humongous drop uh, <laughs> uh, in the in the last uh, kind of day or so. Uh, something going on there, and so I can continue going through this list uh, to try and understand what's going on in the market, right? Um, and it, it goes uh, beyond big movements, right? It goes uh, there are there are lots of different types of analysis. Uh, one of them is consecutive candles. So although this is not a, a, a a huge uh, uh, movement. Uh, it's telling us that uh, the pound has had a, an exceptional amount of consecutive candles, uh, bearish consecutive candles, right? So normally it's just a handful. Now there's an exceptional amount. And remember, um, uh, Auto Charters does all that work, the hard work for you, right? So, um, uh, and let's say a big movement on pound Swiss franc uh, might be uh, 30 or 40 pips but on uh, pound Japanese yen, that's 80 or 90 pips, right? So the system uh, self-adjusts, right? It's, it's not like it uses the same uh, thresholds for each currency pair uh, or each instrument. Um, it, it actually adjusts itself to the instrument you're, you're looking at. Right? Now, these, uh, uh, obviously, this list of instruments that we've got here is not a complete list. Um, in fact, it's linked to your market watch window, right? So as you can see, I've only got uh, currency pairs in this market watch window. So the only things that are shown in order charters are the, the, the instruments you have in market watch, which it basically telling it, telling order charters, these are the instruments I'm interested in. Okay. So, um, uh, look, this is a demo account that I logged into and um, and uh, it's got you know a, a dozen, two dozen or so uh, pairs in it. Uh, I personally, when I trade, I don't look at two dozen pairs. I look at uh, you know actually less than six or so. Um, uh, but uh, you know if you have a smaller amount of uh, instruments that you're looking at in market watch, you'll obviously get a smaller amount of uh, results within uh, the order chart uh, market scanner. Mm. And then, so, so 
uh, back to some of the results, you you know you have some of these uh, uh, very simple to understand um, big movements and and consecutive candles, and then you start getting uh, you know more complex. So here is an example of a slightly more complex uh, uh, trade setup where um, we were looking at this uh, 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 Euro uh, Kiwi. Um, on the four hourly chart, you can see as we click the view button, it changed to Euro Kiwi four hourly chart. And what we're expecting is a support level and a gray arrow down means that a line is approaching that support level, right? It hasn't yet broken through. Um, and, and, and in just a moment, you'll notice there's a green arrow just above it. And guess what that is? That's a green arrow that's broken through the resistance level. So we'll, we'll pick that up in just a moment. So, 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 what is, so what is it telling us? It's telling us that um, on the four hourly chart, there's a very strong support level. And we can see absolutely, uh, completely agree with order charters. Well, let me choose a different color. That was a really bad uh, color. Let me go with a yellow that should contrast nicely. We, we can see that it really has picked up a really good uh, uh, support level over here. Um, and, and the price is moving towards this level. Now, in, this, in today's webinar, we're not going to go into, into how to trade this <laughs> exactly, right? So there's actually three ways of trading uh, this kind of trading opportunity, right? Um, the, uh, the, the first way is to take a, a short spot position. Um, with a take profit at um, at this level it's approaching. The second way of doing it is is um, to actually set a, a sell stop position. So at that level, waiting for a breakout and then short. And the third way of trading it is to actually set a, a buy limit order at this level, expecting a bounce, right? So there's actually three different ways of, of trying to uh, execute this trade. Uh, but needless to say, um, it's extremely important uh, for you to know that there is this uh, support level uh, on Euro Kiwi because, you know, in my experience, um, you know, there, if there is going to be a long term breakout, there is at least going to be um, some kind of whipsaw, some kind of pullback and resistance, just like there has been um, at all these other occasions um, over the last uh, few days, right? So, extremely, extremely important uh, level uh, to keep an eye on. Okay, and then so that's kind of the next level of of um, of uh, complexity, and then we have uh, an even greater level of complexity. So here we have uh, support and resistance playing together to form a triangle pattern uh, in uh, what is this? This is uh, Australian dollar um, loony, right? Um, and um, there was a, a very small breakout. Let me uh, zoom in here. A very small breakout uh, through this resistance level. Yes, uh, order charters identify this as a pattern uh, because theoretically um, there is a breakout over here. Uh, this is not really a breakout. If you know anything about technical analysis, um, uh, you know you need a much more distinct uh, breakout through uh, a support or resistance level to really call it a breakout. Um, and then obviously it was with a pullback. Um, you know, is this something I would trade right now? I'm not sure. The breakout wasn't very strong. Probably not something that I would I would trade um, at this at this stage. Okay, so uh, let's go back to some more stuff that Auto Chart has identified. Uh, we have uh, an ascending triangle over here. Oh, now this is very interesting. Ascending triangle on pound Swissy. Um, this is interesting to me because. It's a quite a strong, um, oops, quite a strong resistance level. We can see that order charters did a really, really good job of identifying this resistance level over here. It's not perfect, but it's definitely there, right? Um, lots of touch points. In fact, it goes even further uh, back over here. Uh, lots of resistance here, and a very strong. Uh, let me zoom in again. Uh, absolutely, very, very strong movement uh, through this resistance level um, and then because it's a green little arrow uh, it auto charts provides a forecast level now that forecast price level is not based on uh, you know which direction is the wind blowing or some kind of random event it's actually a um, uh, it's it's based on technical analysis theory right uh, I won't go into the calculations but essentially um, 
it maps the initial height of the trade to the breakout level and then what we do is we scale it by the uh, by the pattern quality um, which is kind of by half I'm not going to really go through that right now but you can see it's kind of half of that distance and that's where we set the the price uh, level uh, the target price level but again a uh, very interesting uh, trading uh, opportunity right here on this ascending triangle um, and so you can continue to go through these uh, 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 trade setups uh, uh, to to try find yourself the kind of trades that you wanna you wanna see. Now, um, I will tease you just a little bit because we're definitely going to do an entire webinar. I'm hoping, Mike, <laughs> just on this topic itself, uh, which is the really? past performance past performance statistics, right? Um, I, I, I'm really hoping I'll get the opportunity because there is this uh, idea of past performance uh, of order charters. I'm sure you're all asking how well does it do? In a way, you're asking the wrong question because <laughs> it, the, the question should be how well does technical analysis do rather than how well does order charters do? Uh, but needless to say, if you copy and paste that URL into a, uh, uh, a browser, you'll actually get uh, the past performance of order chartist, um, uh, you know, for the different uh, uh, asset classes and, and exchanges. Now, past performance isn't indicative of future performance, but for example, these uh, um, key levels that I was showing you, key levels is what we is what we call these um, breakout, uh, um, these horizontal uh, support resistance levels. Um, you can see these are breakouts and approaching levels, 76% uh, and 82% um, uh, probability of hitting uh, the target level. Okay, so really, really high probabilities. You can actually click in and dig in and actually see the probabilities themselves. Again, I'm not going through this uh, uh, right now. Uh, we'll have an entire webinar, I think, just dedicated to, just dedicated to that itself. Um, but really, really high probabilities of, again, of hitting those forecast levels or on the approaching side, which are the gray arrows, um, really high probability of hitting um, uh, the, the approaching levels, um, which is uh, those green lines. You can see the price is moving towards that level. Okay. So how do you filter even more? Let's just say you're, you're not a technical analyst. You don't want to see... Um, uh, breakout chart patterns and, a, and you know and uh, consecutive candles you own, only want to look at key levels and big movements what you do is you click on that little filter icon it looks like a little filter thing and comes up with these this little filter section where you can um, uh, check and uncheck different types of trade setups that you that you may want to may want to see you can see that notice that I don't have m15 um, and M30 uh, ticked. That's because uh, it's just overwhelming for me. It's just too much noise, um, and uh, you know, so so for me, it's just too much. If you're the kind of person that wants to look at uh, more volatile type of uh, opportunities, uh, you're welcome to tick M15, M30, and then you're gonna get. Uh, an absolute fortune of, of events coming up. Let me set everything back to how it was. Uh, notice I had four pages of, of uh, results um, with M15 and M30 ticked. I'm probably gonna have a whole ton more. Uh, I'm now I've got six pages uh, worth of results uh, to go through, right? So um, again, uh, this might or might not be the way, uh, the way you trade, uh, but um, uh, certainly not the, way, uh, not the way I trade, okay? So let me set that back to my uh, 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 settings. Okay, let's go through some of these other um, little buttons on the top of order charters because again, we're trying to give an overview today rather than uh, specifics. Uh, so again, this, these are the kind of trade setups that you want to set when you click the filter icon. This little world icon uh, gives you two links. The one is the performance statistics, which I mentioned just a moment ago. The other one is uh, the order charters web application. Um, if you want, you can copy and paste that into a browser, uh, into a browser window. It'll give you access to a uh, the order charters web application. It's a little uh, old, 
Um, it's actually getting uh, mothballed very soon, um, and um, and uh, we're moving into a slightly more modern version. But you know, for now, it's still uh, quite a nice little tool. Um, so uh, Ross asked a, a good question. Uh, let me get back to, before I move on to the rest of these icons, uh, Ross asked a question, why are some arrows colored and some gray? Okay, Ross, so we have um, this, um, this concept of emerging or uh, approaching and uh, breakout, right, in, in all the charters. And so let me show you the difference between the two because they're very, very important. I'm gonna remove some of these other, um, uh, opportunities. So here I've created a whole bunch of gray ones and there's one um, a green one. So let me start with a green one. The green one tells us that there was a breakout uh, through support or resistance. Bad example. Let me try find a let me try find a better example. Uh, this was the one we looked at before. So Swiss franc uh, uh, pound against the Swissy. You can see that there was a resistance level, which is the green line. Right, so a, a price level where the market found a lot of resistance. It didn't think the pound was worth much more than that. And then there was a breakout through that line, which from a technical analysis theory perspective means that there's potentially a new trend um, that's going to happen, right? So a breakout normally means that um, there's a potentially a new trade to follow, right? Now, um, the, the, the other um, uh, type of trade setup we have are these gray gray arrows. The gray arrows are an indication that there is some kind of support and resistance going on, but it's still um, within parameters, right? So you can see here, what is this? This is um, uh, the Canadian dollar against the US dollar on a daily chart. Uh, the As we all know, the US dollar has just been uh, depreciating over months and months and months now. Um, uh, that's what happens when a uh, central bank uh, decides to print an infinite amount of money. Uh, <laughs> and so I laugh at it because I keep telling people um, uh, the market is skyrocketing here in the US, obviously, as everyone knows, except for the last day or two. But everyone tells me, wow, the market's been doing well. I said, yes, but in global terms, you're no richer because <laughs> your currency has just been tanking. Right? <laughs> it's been devaluating. So, so it's devaluing. So anyway, it's a... I have a good, uh, good little uh, chuckle with some of my friends about um, uh, about the stuff. Anyway, you can see here. Back to the uh, sorry, Ross. I got uh, distracted for a moment. Um, uh, you can see this gray arrow means that the price is still within some kind of trend, right? It hasn't yet done a breakout. So here is one on. Uh, let me zoom in. Here's one on. Uh, what did I click on? Euro Ord uh, daily. Again, no breakout yet still a compression pattern coming in between support and resistance. Um, this is quite interesting, these triangle patterns where there's this compression. Uh, if any of you are familiar with um, a term called a straddle, it's mostly used in options trading, but you can also achieve it in, um, in, in, in spot trading, uh, currency trading. A straddle is basically where you take a, uh, a position, um, uh, uh, you know, you can take a, a, a stop, uh, a, a buy stop position on this direction, a buy stop position in the sell direction. Um, and then uh, you kind of wait for the breakout. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you believe in technical theory that, you know, the price is going to give way, it's either going to kind of explode uh, long or explode short, right? Choose one, one of the two directions. Um, so these are quite interesting, these kind of compression um, uh, uh, trade trade setups. So Ross, I hope that I have um, hope that I have uh, yeah uh, answered that. Okay, um, so let me let me continue uh, with that. So uh, again, going back to this little uh, icon over here, you can launch the web app, the past performance statistics. Um, there's a little cog which allows you to change account. Um, we won't go into that. That's not important. This is a super interesting one. This is the access to the order chartist uh, mobile app. Uh, so I'm sure you're all wondering how do I actually get trade signals on my best friend, my 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 cell phone. Um, if you go to the uh, uh, Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and you search order chartist and you download the app, um, it's it's 
uh, available to you. It's not a free to use app. You, you can't buy it, nor can you just get free access to it like most apps. You have to actually click the scan QR code button. You walk up to your screen and you scan this QR code that's on the screen over here. And um, it will allow you in as a Go Markets customer. Uh, and that is a super interesting app because it is based on uh, one of our most premium features called our favorites. Uh, and and uh, wow, I'm trying to, I've just realized I'm, I'm just dumping a whole bunch of information on all of you. Uh, but um, anyway, this is a high level overview now. Um, our favorites is our basically our most premium feature that we offer. And uh, remember these uh, pattern or the, the 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 statistics that I showed you just a second ago, all these stats. Um, our favorites is basically us combining all these statistics along with all the trading opportunities that are in the market at the moment. And um, we provide this probability filter. Uh, and so you can say that, hey, only show me trade setups uh, with such and such uh, probability, at least a 60% probability. Now, that is what the AutoCharts mobile app is based on. Because we generate so many trade setups um, on a daily or even hourly basis, you, your phone would be going off, you know, just <laughs> 40, 50 times a day, you know, even if you're strict with what you're uh, telling it to alert you on. And so what we only do is we only send you a push notification and alert when there's a high probability event, right? And what do we mean is a high probability event? Uh, you know, something that has had over 60% a hit rate um, in the last uh, 12 months, right? So if we go to minimum of 70%, you see, we've gone down from seven pages down to um, just uh, almost one page. If you go to 75% for past performance statistics, you're down to, uh, what is this, five opportunities currently right now. If you go to 80%, then, you know, you're looking for miracles, okay? <laughs> I stole those through. 80% um, uh, is just ludicrous. Uh, this is um, a market uh, marketing team wanting uh, something extreme. Uh, you know, you, you can't expect to get an 80% hit rate in the markets. Even just 60% hit rate in the market reduces you down from uh, kind of seven pages of opportunities uh, down to uh, just two pages of opportunities. Again, depending on, uh, you know, your um, the, the, the instruments you're looking at and the, and the setups that you're looking at okay um so um uh okay so so that's the 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 the, the mobile phone i see a few questions coming through chris is there a pdf with all this information uh, chris there is no pdf with all this information but there is an extensive library of educational videos um uh, which the Go Markets team has access to, and what I'll do is I'll 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 have a chat to the guys and and make sure it's available to you. Um, there is also a link you can go to. Let me let me show you uh, this uh, this link, and I'll send it on to all of you in the chat window. Um, I will send you a link here to all participants. The entire audience there we go i sent you a link um this is an interesting little download page um you can download the metatrader plugin from here or from the go markets website and there's four uh, little videos um explaining um explaining things in fact the videos explain everything i've explained uh, except in a much more succinct way obviously because they've been planned right um uh, but again uh, it's just more about using the tool rather than the intricacies of technical analysis and support and resistance and and that's the reason for these uh, for these webinars um, of course okay so uh, um uh, uh, i see jeffrey um is asking are there monthly fees uh, for this there are no monthly fees um uh, uh, it, it's in fact it's even better than than that. Um, we are a completely market neutral order chart. It's a completely market neutral uh, analysis provider. We get we do not get rebated based on your trades. Uh, we do not have any incentive to make you trade, make you win money, lose money. We pro we try to provide you a completely neutral 
uh, an unbiased view on the market. And uh, Go Markets pays a technology license fee to us, right? So there is uh, no uh, nonsense in terms of incentives, um, and there is absolutely no fee for you as long as you have a live uh, funded account uh, with Go Markets. Um, uh, I believe. Michael, be able to tell me, I'm not sure, there might be a small uh, hurdle, like a minimum deposit of $500 or, or something like this. I don't I don't remember if there is a little hurdle, but it definitely there has was, a large um, account. There was, Ilan, but we're, what we've done, because we we really want people to start uh, using the, 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 the incredible tool that you've shown people, we really want to sort of ramp this up in terms of giving you the opportunity. So it's a funded account with any amount, okay. and you get Great. access to that in your client portal. That's, uh, well, well, there that's we interest. go. So, 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 um, it's uh, an, an account with with uh, with a funded a funded live account is what you need. Um, I do believe that you can use the tool um, uh, um, on a demo account, but then all the trade setups that come up are a few candles delayed. Um, so it's a bit of a teaser, of course, um, but you know that's obviously an incentive for you to to open a funded account, uh, to open a live account and, and fund it. Um, um, uh, Tony, that's very interesting that you don't have the uh, fourth icon uh, to get the mobile app. Uh, that's definitely something you need to um, email to uh, uh, to the Go Market support team and. Um, we we are not allowed to directly communicate with uh, our broker partners um, with their clients. Um, you have to liaise with your support team, and then they will escalate. If there's a technical issue, they will escalate uh, the problem uh, to us, and we'll resolve a technical issue that's there. Uh, so sorry, Tony, if you don't see that. Um, okay. So uh, Stephen is asking a, 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 a good question. What are the what uh, what sort order are the are the symbols? Um, so the sort order of the symbols actually is, um, it's kind of a, a temporal order or um, a latest found order. It's kind of that. Uh, <laughs> and let me explain what I mean by kind of. Um, it's actually in the, it's ordered in the age in candles. So for example, this opportunity on Ord CAD is, um, uh, two candles old, so it's at the top. You'll find that the Euro NZD uh, opportunity over here is probably two or three candles old. We don't know exactly where it was identified, but it's probably two or three candles old. A uh, GBP Swiss franc, you can see it's one, two, three, four, four candles old, right? Um, and so uh, uh, why I'm saying it's not exactly uh, in time order is because, uh, um, for example, this daily pattern over here you know um it okay this is uh, this is quite a few candles old so um you know you have different amounts of candles for h4 and h1 are different amounts of actual time but what we do is we measure the age in candles because it tells you how old the trade setup is um in in of itself right rather than in in time right so um it's it's in in age okay now I've spoken for wow uh, 30 minutes nonstop. Uh, I wish I had a glass of water and another cup of coffee. Uh, Rod, oh God, Rod, uh, <laughs> whatever coffee you're drinking, Ilan, I want some. All right, yeah, uh, Rod, sorry about that. That that is definitely an effect of coffee. Uh, waking up at five in the morning, I'm a little bit um, of an intense person too. Um, okay, so uh, Rad is also asking, why is there no smiling face on the upper right corner of the chart? Okay, so Rad is talking about um, that little guy over here. Why is he not smiling? Um, so Rad, this little man is not smiling because uh, this little man has nothing to do with order charters. This is MetaTrader telling you that you're running an expert advisor called order chartist. And the little unhappy face means it is not trading on your behalf. So <clears throat> uh, uh, this puts your mind at ease that order charters is not uh, placing buy sell orders based on these uh, trade setups we're giving you. So this is not something that order charters has control over. This is just MetaTrader telling you you're running an EA called order charters and it's not trading for you, right? It's not an auto trading app. Okay. Um, 
so so Keith, you can absolutely use this uh, tool on any uh, uh, symbols that that you have. Uh, let's actually add some uh, some symbols in here. Um, I just added a couple of random indices uh, into the market watch window, and you can see a whole bunch of stuff in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this all patterns, and uh, you can see immediately when I refreshed, I've got DAX 30. I've got something happening on the DAX 30 uh, on oh, not much on some of the other indices, but definitely a lot of stuff happening on on the DAX right now. So the answer is it'll work on any of the instruments. Um, that uh, is in your market watch window. A great, um, a great, uh, great pickup. Um, so uh, Sunny is asking, can auto charts be used for trading shares uh, and uh, shares options? So uh, with regards to options, let me just put that to rest first. Options is a way of exposing yourself to the market. It is a methodology of exposing yourself to the market instead of spot trading. So we don't look at the options market itself, uh, but you know, if you think there's going to be volatility coming up on the Australian uh, dollar, Canadian dollar, uh, because of this uh, compression in the pattern, then you can absolutely take an options position if your broker allows you, uh, but we don't look at options pricing. But yes, again, as I said before, it'll work on any instruments. Um, so that's in the uh, available at your broker. So um, let me quickly see what's going on here. Um, so there's some oils, there's some metals. Um, so anything that's in here, uh, it'll it'll work for, right? Any symbols that are in here at, at, um, on your market watch, um, it'll work for. Okay. Okay, so Shane has already installed the app and everything is working. Well, that's good news, okay, because it's beyond my pay grade to actually uh, help you with technical problems, Shane. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to the technical guys. So, Mike, if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, say a few words about the risk calculator because I know you mentioned that it in the be, beginning. Yeah, um, that will be now, fantastic. I know a lot of people use that. that, that will be yeah, awesome. so um, the... The the thing is though, uh, Mike, I'm not sure if you picked up, but I have um negative 464 balance on my account that, <laughs> that I was told to use um in this demonstration. We might need to resolve that for the next um for the uh, next absolutely. webinar so I can actually play some trades. Um so and I say that uh, because um the risk calculator is made for risk management, yet I can't place a trade. So everyone um I'm going to have to wave my hands a little bit and um, and explain what what this thing does. Um, so before I actually show you what this fancy little tool does, um, I want to explain to you the difference between um, in risk management between a more professional trader versus a a novice trader. So what I have seen in my uh, uh, career um, uh, is with retail traders is that they are in the habit of creating new orders, setting their volume to be some default value, one, and then selling the market or buying the market. Um, with this, uh, let me actually make this, uh, for example, 0 0.1 run because I've only got 500 bucks. And then they trade all their instruments with this one kind of volume. And irrespective of where they set their stop losses, or take profits that are always trading 0 0.1, right? Or whatever they've chosen as their volume. And then they think that they're managing their risk by moving the stop loss closer and further away. <clears throat> this is in fact the complete opposite of what professional traders do. Professional traders set their stop loss according to their market strategy, right? So for example, if I think I'm going to go short on Australian dollar, Canadian dollar right now, right? Um, my, let's say I want to go short, my trading strategy will tell me that I'm going to place a stop order uh, or my, my stop loss at um, 0.9527, which is the previous turning point, right? So that's, that's what I think is going to, is going to happen. Um, I would set, let's say, a, a short position and that's how I would set my stop order. But, but this, now, now I want to trade. Now, if I had to uh, do what most retail traders do, which is now start adjusting my risk 
my risk based on how much money I'm prepared to uh, win or lose on this trade, then what I'm doing is I'm going against my trading strategy, right? And if I'm expecting, let's say, volatility on the Australian dollar to come up and I move my stop loss too close, I'm going to get knocked out, not because uh, my uh, my forecast was wrong, but I'm going to get knocked out because of market volatility, right? And so, so many times I hear traders saying, oh, uh, the, oh my broker sucks. It was chasing my stop loss and, you know, it, it, it knocked me out and then it went in the same direction. I can't believe it. No, that is not on the broker. Believe me, the broker's got a very equal, good, strong book on both ends of your position, right? There's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of traders taking positions in all different directions, and the broker does not need your 10 bucks. I promise you that. The only reason you got knocked out due to, um, is due to market noise, which is your own personal ignorance of market volatility. Okay, so if I know that, um, let me take a, a different example. If I know that the US markets are about to open, right, and I'm trading uh, Euro, and I'm trading the one hourly chart, I know that I'm expecting some massive volatility to come up right now, right? And, and I wanna trade a, 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 let's say a long position now on the, on the Euro uh, with a stop loss at this uh, turning point, which is my trading strategy. Just because I wanna risk less money doesn't mean I need to move my stop loss higher and closer. So then you're wondering, hang on a second, Ilan, you're telling me don't move my stop loss. So how am I supposed to manage my risk? The answer is you manage your risk by adjusting the volume of your trade. Okay, so now instead of using 0 0.1, use something else. So now what I'm gonna show you here is, let's just say I wanna trade long Euro dollar, right? And um, when I bring up this risk calculator, it, it, it's got this little orange line and it's asking me to tell it where I wanna set my stop loss. So I want to trade euro dollar long, hypothetically, um, uh, and I want to set my stop loss at this level at uh, 119.86. Now, let's say I only want to risk 50 bucks on this trade. What the risk calculator tells me is if I want to go long, I want to set my stop loss at this price, which is a risk of about 30 pips. And I only want to risk, if it moves against me, I want to risk $50 of my account. I should be setting a volume of 0 0.17, right? So when I actually set my position, I go 0 0.17. So even if it hits my, uh, my stop loss, right? I know, I've got, obviously don't have enough money. I know that I will only lose $50. Of course, sometimes there's market slippage, so you might lose a little bit more, right? You don't get closed out exactly the same price, but essentially you're risking only that amount of, um, of money. The beauty of that is that you can use the same strategy across any um, a time interval, right? So for example, this is an hourly chart, right? Where I wanna take a, a position with only 30 pips risk. Let's just say um, that I'm trading something completely different. I'm trading... Uh, uh, I, I want to find GBPJPY, the killer of all traders. GBPJPY. I want to trade GBPJPY. I think the price, oh, in fact, let's make it GBPJPY four hourly chart, right? So I'm now going to trade a four hourly chart. I think that uh, the, I'm going to trade long and I'm going to set my stop loss at this level over here, right? Now, this is a Compared to the previous position that I wanted to take on Euro dollar, which was about 30 pips, this is a 125 pip position. Let's say I want to take it long and I, want, and I tell the risk calculator, hey, I only want to risk 50 bucks. It's telling me to set my volume to be 0.04, right? Imagine if I didn't, if I just took a position of one lot or 0.1, I'd be risking double what I wanted to, to, uh, to risk, right, in, in terms of money value. Now, um, this is not only in US dollars, so my account here that I've got is in US dollars, but um, if your account is in uh, Aussie dollars or in uh, euros or yen, 
the risk calculator would automatically adjust to the uh, uh, to the currency of your account, right? So you know how much money you're you're potentially losing on this trade. And so I think in the next kind of um, uh, maybe I think it's in a, another webinar or two, um, we'll do an entire uh, 45, 30 minutes or 45 minutes on the risk calculator and how to and how to actually trade it. Um, but I think I've given you a bit of an overview. Let me see if there's some questions. Um, what does stop loss default to? Ross asks, uh, when you open up this um, this little uh, risk calculator, what does it default to? Ross, I don't remember. It's just kind of a few pips away from where it, it where the current price is. It's not a significant. Uh, it's not anything significant that we work out. It's just a, a random price next to the current price. Um, uh, so via letter. Is, is saying, does auto charts indicate where to place entry and exits on your chart? Violetta doesn't give you the numbers specifically because then it's an advisory service. Uh, but certainly if you go through some of our education, there are very um, uh, well documented principles and technical analysis about where to uh, where to set entries, exits, stop losses, et cetera. Um, it's just from a, a legal perspective, auto charter simply cannot tell you because then we're an advisory service and that's not what we are as a, as a company. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, Sunny's asking, um, um, uh, Sunny's asking if uh, what the difference is in risk equity percentage uh, uh, balance. Yeah, uh, so Sunny, this is a, a very good question. So. Um, when you say risk amount, um, he's, Sonny's asking about these little check boxes over here, right? Um, when, when we say risk amount, uh, that's obviously an actual amount of dollars that, that I want to risk. Um, equity, uh, this is funny because I have a negative balance. So let's say I want to trade uh, 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 10%. Um, I want to risk 10% of my equity. Um, uh, this is the available equity I have on my account. So let's just say um, I have, let's say $500 for making it round, $500 in my account, forget the negative sign, um, $500 in my account, uh, and um, I don't have any positions open, then I still have $500 of equity. My equity and balance are identical, okay? But let's just say I start opening positions, right? I, I, uh, I open a, like multiple positions and I have a profit and loss um, on some of those positions, my equity of my account go, grows up and down based on the, um, uh, based on my, my open equity, right? So, so my balance would remain the same, uh, um, uh, right? The balance would always remain, let's say $500, but my equity would go up and down with the open position. So you can take a percentage of, of any of those, um, uh, amounts and then it, it'll actually store it for future. So let's just say I set both of these to 10%, right? And I close that down. Um, if all goes according to plan, I only have to set that uh, once and then uh, it's kept next time that I, I, I open my risk calculator, those percentages are there already. Uh, I hope that uh, makes sense. Uh, Stuart says, uh, goodbye online risk calculator. That's awesome, yes, exactly. Um, Jeffrey, uh, you're once again worried about the price of this. Uh, there is no price for this tool. Uh, it includes the risk calculator. There is no price. Again, uh, Go Markets pays uh, Auto Charters a license fee, a fixed license fee uh, for these um, for these tools. Uh, so nothing for you to pay, except for obviously having a live funded account. So you need to put some money down. Okay. Just on that, uh, Ilan, uh, Jeffrey, if you're meaning things like swap fees and any brokerage, then they obviously won't be included into the loss. But obviously, you can include, you can work that out and include it into your into your maximum oh. uh, maximum dollars. Just in case that's what you mean. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mike. Sorry. Now that I'm rereading it, um, uh, I see what he means. He means does it include the actual uh, uh, fees and the thing is that uh, Jeffrey, you you know, you if you take a, a a short position, you're you're close you're closed out at the at the at the bid, and if you take a long position, you're closed out at the ask. So uh, 
it, it depends on the side of the of the trade you're on, right? But um, so I'm I'm not sure if I'm getting too in depth. <laughs> <laughs> on this for the for this but, but right um but certainly the price the, the 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 risk amount is is indicative of what you'll be uh, potentially losing if you hit your stop loss right so it might be a few dollars up or down uh, depending on the market volatility and the available uh, execution prices um, at that time right um but certainly it's very indicative of that um we can't also uh, predict uh, market slippage right uh, there might not be a price at 150.854. You know, you might only get close at a 150.852 or 150.84, right? Um, so there obviously sometimes there's market slippage too, but it's supposed to be a guide uh, for you. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, uh, okay. Wow. I'm sure the lot of you oh, have I got a massive headache from listening to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that's the end of what I want to say today, uh, and and um, it was fun and uh, and some really really good questions, um, and I hope that uh, we can we can talk again very very soon. Ilan, that was awesome, mate. As always, thank you so much. Um, I just want to just uh, Kahinda, you asked if there'd be a recording. Yes, we'll make a recording uh, available of this. If anybody wants it, drop me a line. I'll just pop it in. Uh, um, uh, can I chance. hand over the? Can I hand over my screen back to you, or you, do you have something to show the guys? You can. You can. I'll just okay, type there it this is. in and I'll grab it back. There it is. I should be handing it back to you. Okay. Okay. So um, you can. Your webcam's still showing there, Ilan. My webcam is still showing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. No, I don't mind. It's great to see you. But... <laughs> there it is. There it is. I'm off. <laughs> there we go. I'll put your. I'll put my email address in into the chat box if anybody wants a recording of today. Um, I'll make it, make sure it's available. Uh, just a quick poll. Um, just relating to this, uh, there was a few people who sort of intimated my problems with um, setting up. Um, if you do need to click in the box, I'll flick that list through to um, the guys that support, so they can um, they can sort of resolve any issues you have, or or hand you throw hand hold you through adding it uh, adding it in there. Um, we'll have Alan come back, maybe uh, depending on availability, maybe the first week of next month, if that if that fits with you, Alan. But we'll chat about that and lock it in so we can. Um, do the next round okay that's gonna leave that poll open just while i'm having a look through any other questions um yeah lots of uh yeah lots of positive vibes there um Uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to ramp up, ramp it up with a few different things, um, which we're having a chat about later. So uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled. Now, the great news is you don't have to be. Um, I'll just shut that poll down. Thank you for your feedback. And I'll pop that list through to support. Um, if you do try and set it up and you can't manage it, then just click support online. Um, what we'll do is because you're registered one of the reasons we did this for an inner circle was that you're now registered as an inner circle member so we run a session every wednesday evening so uh, and then people you'll get updated about what the next topic is i think next week um uh as well as a live update market update tomorrow which i'll flick you the link of in a moment we're going to do some uh um some trend continuation uh as a as a potential plan we know that Often there's a retracement in a trend that gives another potential opportunity if that trend continues. So we're going to talk about that next week. Well, I'm going to have Ilan back ASAP, really, just to sort of do next next stage. As I said, just you're getting notified of what the next topic is on a week by week basis, and then you can decide whether to tune in or otherwise. For those of you who want to, we run a live market update on a Tuesday and a Thursday lunchtime. Uh, I know many of you attend that already. Um, but if you want to rock along to that, it's 12.30 Melbourne time. I'm just going to pop that chat into chat as well. Uh, so I'm just going to put lunch time and then the link. So you can click on that. It'd be great to see you there if you can make it along. Um, there we 
we go. So if you have a look, it should be in there now. You just click on that, it should take you through. Uh, and of course, um, look, any questions about anything to do with your uh, with your account, um, then connect with support. If there's anything to do with um, education, then ping me a line. Always great to hear how you get, as the guys are getting on. I know many of you attend these sessions regularly. Um, it's always fantastic to see um, your happy, smiling faces, or at least virtually. <laughs> um, in terms of, um, we're going to be talking again about maybe about share CFDs and adding it to them and how we can optimize the power of auto charters with those. So again, keep your um, eyes and ears open. There's some great news about share CFDs in that we're now making them available on demo accounts, um, certainly the US ones. And of course, one thing special about Go Markets is you can place out of market um out of market orders onto the system which you can't do with any other mt5 broker in australia so again ping me if you want some more information on that um Ru, drop me the line um the uh, the auto charges training training videos if you have a look at that first link that ilan put in um to the uh uh to the chat that's where you can access those from um just think we covered all and as i said fantastic to see so many new faces here as well as you um you regulars so i guess from that it, it really remains to be seen uh, or remains to say that um trade safe interesting times over the next two or three days we've got uh we've got obviously some some jobs data coming out pretty soon as well as a rake of earnings in the us which are obviously going to impact on equity markets and hence on USD as well. So take care of yourselves. We'll see you again very soon on a session in the near future. Uh, my name is Mike Smith. Good night. Take care. See you again.